one of the most original television programs of recent years is the phenomenon that is Most Haunted. The creators and stars of the show are Yvette Fielding and Carl Beatty, Britain's paranormal power couple. They have been chasing ghosts and scaring the bejesus out of not just themselves, but viewers in both the UK and USA for the last six years. <laughs> But what is Yvette, the Queen of Scream, and Carl, her husband, really like? I'm not being argumentative. Don't even smile. I'm not smiling. Once again, we have in-depth access to their personal and professional lives. This time we follow them as they cope with Yvette facing a major operation. Never die. Well, you're gonna die, just not today. As Carl has a knockout night in London. as they spend Christmas Day together as a family. <gasps> That's so gorgeous! former Blue Peter presenter and star of Most Haunted, Yvette Fielding, celebrating her 40th birthday party in style, with the highlight being Carl's very special present, a Porsche. Nice. <laughs> Since then, Yvette and Carl's professional careers have reached a new high. After my 40th birthday party, it was a bit strange because you'd come from being all happy and seeing all your family and being excited and, and then having to really concentrate and get back into work mode. We are about to embark on seven nights of spine-tingling paranormal investigation. The Halloween lives are usually our biggest projects because, obviously, the nature of Halloween. Um, but this was our biggest project ever. It was very, very enjoyable and uh, I think the audience and people at home enjoyed it as well. Let's bring these spirits into the room, please. Use this energy now. Up and let me go. I knew in the back of my mind that I had my operation coming up um, and I was very frightened about it. But, uh, you know, it kept, most of it kept me busy so I didn't think about it too much. As soon as the show finished and we came home, all of a sudden, I started to get very, very nervous and frightened. As it was getting to the end, you kind of knew, as soon as it ended, she was almost going to hospital the next week. And, and that was tough. It's a cold, cold feeling On a real lazy wind Like the chill winds of early winter sweeping around the family house, a cold reality has entered the safety of their home. Today is one of the most important days that the family has had to face. Yvette has explained to daughter Mary that mummy is having an operation today. No, I've never left them to go into hospital and I don't like it. I don't like leaving you at all, do I? No. But I'll be back soon yeah. to boss you about. Oh <laughs> the morning of the operation, <laughs> I can't describe how nervous I was. Um, I think at one point I wanted to be sick, um, running to the loo, um, very shaky, uh, just terrified. And I kept, I kept, ridiculous things were going through my head like, I'm going to die, I'm going to die, I'm going to die, I'm sick, I'm going to die. And that's what I was thinking all the time. Oh, hello, love. Uh. <laughs> hello, love. Uh. Look, there's this sight to behold. It's gorgeous. <laughs> I was trying to put a brave face on it more for Yvette. Um, I hadn't slept all night, and because of that, I was very tired. And I was trying to sort of cope with almost being unconscious as I was wandering around, almost zombi zombified. You know yeah, how are you feeling? Yeah. I haven't slept, are you all right? Mm. 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 Mm.
Uh, go on, you get in the car. Get the keys. If you break down, I'll come and get you, but don't get out of the car. With son William already left for school, it is a final chance for Yvette to say farewell to her daughter. Bye, sweetie. Bye. Bye, then. <laughs> <laughs> All right, darling. Oh, love you. Mm, love you, love you, love you. Be good, all right? Yeah. Mm, be good, be good, be good. Bye, I love you. Love you, love you. Bye, sweetie. Oh, jump in. See you on. Oh, you all right, darling? Bye, I'll see you a bit going. I won't be long. I'll be about five to ten minutes. Bye. Bye. When I saw Mary leaving that morning, um, in my head I was thinking, could this be the last time that I see her? Um, so I'll try not to get all emotional. And then there's the other side that kicks in, say, you know, that's always, don't be so stupid, you'll be fine. Millions of people have operations every day, you'll be fine. You got cold feet and fingers. In from the cold, Yvette makes her final meal before going nil by mouth and explains the reasons why she is having a partial hysterectomy. Yeah, every month when ladies have their monthlies, um, I, mine was just like, just living hell. And it just seemed the older I was getting, the more painful um, that time was. But it was also very inconvenient. I actually couldn't leave the house. Uh, I couldn't drive the car. Um, how shall we say it without... Um, it was, um, it wasn't particularly very nice. If, if, do you know what I'm trying to say? Um, I had to have a change of clothes with me. Now you're understanding what I'm talking about. Um, and it was horrendous. You know, when Mummy has an um, operation, we'll be, I'll be calling you every day. So, um, I'll give you a call later tonight, after Mummy's had her operation, and then uh, tomorrow Mummy will, will, will be able to talk to you. Okay. Do you know a lot of people that get very sensitive about the womb? It, it's just causing me too much pain now and I'd grow, so I'd just rather have it out. I don't feel any attachment to it at all. It's almost like, thanks very much for all your help and making sure that I had two very healthy, beautiful babies. Thank you very much for that, but it's time to say goodbye. Having dropped Mary off at school, Carl speaks more candidly. Fortunately, she's got the best surgeon in the, in, in the country. Um, doing the operation so um, uh, so that's good um, but it's still you're still putting someone that you love in the hands of somebody else um, so that's gonna be the worst I am absolutely terrified that I am going to die I've got this horrible feeling and I know everybody at home is gonna be going oh stupid cow but I can't help it one bloke went in for uh, an ingrowing toenail operation, and he died. I'm going in to have my womb taken out. I could die. And then the gown that they put you in, you know that slit at the back that shows your bum cheeks and everything? That's so, in case you die on the gurney, they can take it off you really quick. I didn't know that, did you? <sighs> Loads of people will be sitting there thinking, oh, for crying out loud, it's just a, a, a standard, bog-standard operation. And they've, you know, they're, they're right, but it doesn't help when it's, it's, um, it's your wife having a bog standard operation. She's still got to go under, she's still got to go into uh, surgery, and she's still got to um, have a knife cutting her. Coming up, coming up. Coming up, on the journey to London, Carl appears to fall asleep at the wheel and is reduced to tears outside the hospital. I just kind of want to go for a walk. Do you mind if I just... We've been following Yvette Fielding as she prepares to say thank you and goodbye to her womb. Thanks very much for all your help and making sure that I had two very healthy, beautiful babies. Thank you very much for that, but it's time to say goodbye. And her husband, Carl, as the anxiety began to kick in. But it's still... it's still putting someone that you love in the hands of somebody else. Um, so that's going to be the worst. Where do you have a cup of tea, 
sweetheart. Carl has returned from dropping their daughter at school, and the couple are now alone. All of a sudden, it's just me and Carl, and just thinking, oh my God, you know, I've got to go to London, and I'm, I'm going to be put to sleep, and what if I don't wake up? And oh, it was it was absolutely awful, really bad. Never die. Well, you're going to die, just not today. We're all going to die. What about that bloke that died with the ingrowing toenail? But he died, didn't he? He went in for an operation for an ingrowing toenail and then he died on the operating table. Why do you keep going about dying for? You're not going to die? Mummy's not going to die, is she? Mummy's just being dramatic Mommy's and stupid. Is she? Mummy's not going to die. No, she... Who's going to look after Daddy and the kids? No, 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 no. no don't, no, not the bowls. <laughs> You've let, don't let the dog look out the... Why not get sterilised? Oh. No, no, don't just look in. <laughs> I bet he's going to come. No, he I can't see. Oh, that's disgusting. Yeah, babies, mummy's babies. Packing her overnight case, Yvette gives us an unusual insight into hospital decorum. Why is it whenever you go to hospital that nurses always say, have you got a flannel? Why don't you give your face a wash, love? So, I don't normally use a flannel, but I've just brought one with me just in case. <laughs> nurses always use the words pop and slip. If you just like to pop on the couch and slip off your panties. They always use that. I think when I get to the hospital, they're just going to have to slap me continually to calm me down. I'm all right now, but I'm going to become hysterical later. Right, so I'm getting stressed now. <laughs> all done now. Just need to get there, get it over with so I can come home. You know, it's on the phone to her mother at the moment. She's just called. She's, apparently she's just come back from the latest tar on feathering and um, I've asked her to put a good spell on Yvette because I think witches do good ones as well as bad. All packed and ready to go, the duo head off. How's your mum alright? Yeah, she's fine. People are in transit on the M6, heading to a private hospital in London, and Carl sensitively raises a delicate female matter. So, have you have you said um, said you goodbye to your womb? <laughs> I, I did yesterday. Well, actually, no, I Thanks said it. No, I said it this morning. I was sat in the bath, and I actually looked at my tummy and I went, "I'm sorry." <laughs> I was getting more nervous the closer I was getting to London because as the, the closer I was getting to London, the more I knew this was definitely going to happen. And, but I still try to take my mind off a bit of it. And, and there's this point you think, should I be talking to you about, about how she's feeling and is she nervous about the operation and all that? And, or should I just be being daft? And, and I kind of just stuck with the daft thing because I find that easier. If you ask me to have the womb, you can have the womb back. I don't want oh, we can... the womb back. Why do I want the womb back? Well, you know what? We've got that dried out cat upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> Just dry your, your womb out. Yeah. And, and, and frame it. So you have basically dry womb upstairs. If I didn't do Most Haunted, if I didn't do all the uh, ghostly things and talking to dead people, I, I know I wouldn't be thinking like this. Yeah, but the good thing is, we've got to look at it. If you did die, you still could do Most Haunted. Break, 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 car break. Here now, what you mean like this? He's been looking at me, break. It's peripheral vision, I can see, I can see all around me. I can see like, 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 I can see the car in front now, look. Do you fall asleep thing? It's, it's annoying, annoying when, you're right, dri go. when you're driving along go, and go, someone go. next to you has actually fallen asleep, so you just do this, you just go. <laughs> see, look, see your eyes open. But see that one shut. Everyone thinks you're asleep. Hijinks over, Yvette explains why they're going all the way to London for the treatment. Just think, when, you, when we're in a fortunate situation where we can afford to be private with our, you know, get with our health and 
Um, so we just thought, well, we'll, we will pay for somebody that's going to look after us and do it well. Carl, can I just say something? When we get to the hospital, don't start messing about. Please don't embarrass me. And don't talk about my vagina to people like nurses and doctors. Yeah, but you've got to realise, out of everyone in this world, I know your vagina better than anyone. This is With Carl's graphic boast still fresh in their minds, they head to a legendary medical address. You OK? Oh, I'm nervous now. Don't be nervous. It'll be having a couple of hours. Here it is on the left. Okay. No going back now, doll. Permission to film Yvette's operation had been denied, so we had to wait for Carl to bring us any news of her progress. Well, she's, um... She's gone under, and uh, it became also very real then. Um, she's so nervous, I've never seen her so scared or nervous, that nervous about anything. And um, it's, it's, the doctors have been brilliant and the consultants have been fantastic, but <sighs> never watch someone you love go under. Sorry, <laughs> I've got to go. <laughs> oh, what a wuss. <sighs> she's going to kill me when she sees this. I'll be messing around in there, trying to get, take my mind off of it and trying to be strong. And I think I'm just as scared as she is, really. <sighs> my life is in a room up there, in the hands of strangers. Um, it's not, um... I can't... How do you describe that? How, how, I just, I just kind of want to go for a walk. If you mind, if I just. <sighs> well, she's uh, she's out of surgery now. Doctors are really pleased. Uh, with the way it went. Um, she's in uh, a great deal of pain, which was, um, uh, which was pretty hard. And um, I've got to say one of the hardest things for me is I, I could hear, I, I knew she was in pain. Um, she wasn't really that coherent, but uh, I'm in a room and I've got all these people I've never met before telling me to stand in a corner. I couldn't help my own wife who was in, in pain, which that was hard. They just told me I can stay there all night, so I'm going to park this car out of the way so I don't have to leave it in the morning and, um, uh, and get going, so if you don't mind. What if I did lose her? I, I can't... I can't, you know, because I can't think of anything worse than, you know... God, I want to get emotional now. I can't think of anything worse than not, than not being with her. I can't. It's, it's, it's the, the... I don't even want to think about it. It's the next morning, and Carl is at his wife's bedside in her private room. Though seemingly attentive today, Yvette explains that he was rather less so yesterday. You were fiddling with everything last night. Concertina and me to the bed. You made the bed move. He wedged me in the bed before I went to the operation. You moved the bed, so the bed went like, like that. And I was sat in the middle of it, and I couldn't move. 
and then decided to sing Johnny Cash songs. I guess it was for comfort. It was a bloody pain in the arse. I wanted you to feel at home. They then discuss if Yvette saw her dead relatives during her operation, as you do. Did I say anything about, did I say any, that I'd seen anyone? You kept coming out with, I saw my dad, and then you said, I saw Grandma Mary. And then you said, your dad got, Grandma Mary told your dad off for not talking to you and looking at the nurses. Oh, I don't remember it. But then you said, you, you said, Dad's with you now, he's sitting in the chair, and you, you sort of like looked, you didn't point, but you looked over there, to that chair. Did I? Yeah. Oh, why can't I remember it? Oh, bloody hell. Can we just sneak out and go home and take the morphine with us? I want to go home. I want to go home. No, sweetie, I want to take you home. Do you know that great big spot that I had there yesterday? Yeah. It's gone down. What's that about? That's what you need. Anyone who's got spots, this is a good... good Anesthetic? Um, well, this is a good tip for teenagers at home. When you've got spots, go and have a hysterectomy. All the boys and girls together. Don't make me laugh. Please don't make me laugh, Carl. Don't, please. Don't. If you make me laugh... No, so don't, 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 I secretly think Carl wants to kill me. Carl, when the operation had, had been finished and I had my stitches and everything, very funny, but inside I would quite happily kill him. See now, we've got the giggles now. I can't look at you. Don't come in. Don't you dare come in. I'm fine. A brief period of silence passes, but it is a false dawn of peace for a bet, as Carl has other more physical activities in mind for her. That's a shame. Will you piss off? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Don't make me laugh. Why are you doing that? Stop that. Carl continues with his medical diagnosis that laughter is the best medicine, whether you want it or not. Will you leave it alone? Carl, put the bloody thing back. That could have been up my ass for all you know. After the break, Yvette is in bed again, this time at home with her daughter Mary. Get well soon. Did you draw that? Yep. <laughs> I made it by myself. Did you? <laughs> Carl lives it up at a boxing night in London. Oh, uh, and Yvette thinks there may be a ghost in their hotel room on Christmas Eve. If there's anybody here, if there are any spirit people here, please can you knock? Let us know. <laughs> Before the break, we saw a vet give Carl some useful advice when visiting hospitals. I don't talk about my vagina to people. While her husband, Carl, mistook the meaning of the phrase in stitches. You make me laugh, I will slap your face. Okay. Uh, no, don't, 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 After four long nights in hospital, a vet is finally back home in Cheshire. Just stay there, I want you where the dogs are. They're going to run out, aren't they? No, they're not, sweetie. I'm going to make sure they don't. If you come in here, come to the wall. I'm all right, I'm all right. You're not even However, her new walking style is a cause for concern. I'm walking like I've got huge hemorrhoids, which I haven't. 
everyone knows you're going to heal a lot better at home. So I knew getting Yvette back and getting her into bed, into her own bed, into her own environment, um, with all the stuff she knows and loves around her, the kids would be here. And, and that, so it's, that was just paramount to me to get her back home. But don't jump on her at all because she's very delicate. She's got stitches and everything, okay? Okay. Come on, darling. I love Steve. Oh, I miss you. It's just so nice being in your own bed and just have a nice shower. And um, just have your family around you and the fresh air coming through. And oh, it's so lovely to be home. I'm so happy to be home. Too, Mummy. Hope you are feeling lots better today with sunshine and happy and happy times coming your way. Lots of love, lots of love, hugs and kisses. Mary, lots of love, wells, kiss, 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 kiss. It was quite a difficult journey back because she, she had to lie across the back seat. Of course, you've got to have seat belts on and even if you're lying down, so she was in quite a lot of pain. Um, I'm so glad she's upstairs. And I think we should do what Mummy wants because she is very tired and she feels a bit... Yes. It's Sunday night in Streatham Hill and with a vet housebound, Carl has gone to London to do some business. He's been invited along to a nightclub owned by his friend and most haunted colleague, Fred Bat, so that they can catch up with old friends and witness an unusual evening of entertainment. Yes, it's a quaint evening of boxing for a demure audience of gentlemen and ladies suitably refreshed with lager and tequila shots. As owner of the gladiatorial venue, Fred has secured the best ringside table for Carl and some <clears throat> female friends. Definitely, yeah. Yvette always thinks I'm up to something dodgy when I come down to London. But I'm, I'm here to promote our channel. I'm not here to enjoy myself. Meanwhile, back at home, a vet is fed up watching TV. I'm so bored. I'm just going to turn it off. Mandy! What are you doing? What are you cooking? Um, lamb chops, veg, and green. Carl and I are really lucky because we've got Mandy who uh, looks after the children um, and we've got um, Anne-Marie who is the housekeeper. Um, they've been brilliant whilst I've been at home because um, they've looked after me and, you know, sort of put up with me going, Mandy, and what are you doing? Ectoplasm. However, the evening then becomes just as exciting as Carl's, but in a rather different way. Hey! I found a light switch! Why is there a light switch here? Oh, this bloody time! Five years and never knew there's a bloody light switch! Why have you got a light switch there? I think the appeal of tonight for me is people watching. Because, you know, you watch these, these two guys who've worked hard, they've trained hard, they're nervous, they want to get in the ring and they have to fight each other. And it's difficult. It's very, it's hard work. Uh, and, and you see all these other people shouting, screaming and getting progressively drunk as the evening gets on. And fighting amongst themselves if the fight in the ring isn't good enough. Apparently a, a brawl took place in the in the audience. I can't wait to see that. How fantastic! See, Carl gets all the fun. There I am, laid up, and he's there in the midst of it all. Earlier, some poor guy got his nose so blooded when he got punched. A piece of blood that flew past my ear and hit someone behind me, and all I could hear the guy go, "Gitching!" 
Why? Why would you want that? See, it all looks fabulous here, doesn't it? This fabulous bar. And uh, if you... Right? Look behind there. It's a disgrace. And I blame Mr Vitti for that. I tidied this out. Look at it. I tidied all that out, and now it's an absolute disgrace. One of the things about uh, about the table being inside uh, and being with Fred, basically that means uh, he, he, he gets surrounded by his harem. Uh, I suppose I'm a bit of a ladies' man. <laughs> Where he stops, he is surrounded by young, beautiful women. I mean, I'm lucky, because I already have my young, beautiful woman. And, you know, he, and these girls can't, you know, and nothing compared to her. Oh, now this is highly exciting. This is the best gadget ever in the whole of the universe. If you've not seen one, you need to get one, right? This is fantastic. If Carl sees me do this, he'll go mad. It makes a bit of a noise. Home, and I'm going to say how hard I've worked to get in that poster up, which is very high and very dangerous work. Okay, somebody else did it, but that's what tonight was. That's the, the, the what we wanted to achieve tonight, and that's what we have achieved. And uh, the rest of it has been very hard work. I haven't enjoyed any of it. It is one month later, and while it is a picturesque morning in Cheshire, this is not where the Beatty family is going to be spending the festive period. Drinking in the morning sun. This Christmas uh, was, was a very important one uh, for us because it was the first, you know, it was the first time we could kind of let our hair down a bit and celebrate after, after Rivette's operation. Carl is the first BT up and ready for a very special trip to another country. Whenever we go anywhere, this is what normally happens. I'm up and about, and nobody else is. We've got half an hour before we get picked up. I haven't slept yet, that's probably why I'm up. Cuff wrapping prezzies. And the rest of the BT clan is asleep. Next to emerge is Angela, Carl's mother-in-law. Covered one light this Christmas in. <laughs> she's smiling, she's smiling in front of the camera, but inside she's, she's snarling. Don't stop it, don't stop. She's snarling, she'll be looking at she's going, wait, wait, on camera she goes, oh, it's not funny, it's, it's not, not funny. funny, it's not funny, it's not funny. This is our holiday. <laughs> hey, it, was, it was my holiday until you decided to come. Hey, gorgeous. Hi. Don't you look lovely? Look at you. Mm. Well, then again, you always look gorgeous. <laughs> I think you take after me. Yeah, probably do. There we go. This will be Yvette's first trip away from home since the op, and it shows. Come on, Dad, come on, come through here. Carl picked up his parents, Jeff and Anne, from Surrey the day before so that they could all travel together. Oh, 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 okay, like, Worried about missing their flight, Yvette cracks the whip. Let's everybody, let's even get the cases outside. We should be ready. Go, 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 kids. After a short flight, they arrive at their festive destination, Christmas in Scotland. What we're doing now is we've actually just landed in, um, in Edinburgh. And we're now going to attempt to get a, a helicopter to take us to the, um, to the uh, hotel. The family have been really looking forward to the special treat of the helicopter ride to ferry them from the airport to the hotel. But Houston, we have a problem. Right, so where does that leave us? What?
What for the taxi? We have to get a taxi to the right. castle. No helicopters. Um, what a shame. Right. Doesn't matter what I think, anyway. It's nothing you do. You made a decision, so uh, that's that. We're stuffed, and um, and you carry on doing what you're doing. Yeah, part of our Christmas is now ruined because of of malfunction on your helicopter. Well, it is sad. I mean, may, maybe in future you probably check helicopters the day before so you can get things sorted. I'm not being argumentative. You're the person who couldn't even contact us after we've tried to contact you. So we've had to contact you for you to tell us your helicopter's not working. I think it's pretty. I think that's pretty pretty poor. Well, you should have made sure you had a contact number. Come on, Mr. Beatty, let's get in. Let's not spoil the Christmas mood. Cool. There we go. Despite the disappointment, Sorry. they <laughs> finally arrived to a traditional Scottish welcome at the Castle Hotel. Thank you very much. Please, Agnes, can I... After a quick check-in, Yvette then discovers an unwelcome presence in their room. They stuck us in a haunted room, for God's sake. That wasn't good, was it? They had an open well in the room. An open well with water. How many bodies have been thrown down there? So Yvette decides to tackle the paranormal problem head-on with Carl reluctantly joining in. Carl, come here, let's see if we can get some knocking going, just out of interest. Oh, Christ. No, I know, I know, I know, I just want to see if anything happens. So just stand still. If there's anybody here, if there are any spirit people here, please can you knock, let us know. Can you please knock twice? If there's somebody here, please knock loudly. You hear that? Well, if you are here, show yourself to us tonight. No, 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 it's Christmas Eve. For... No, forget that. I just wanted to know if that... I knew there was something here. Open shut some confer... doors. Confirms that there's... Make some noise for us. No, Carl, don't be asking such stuff things. Coming up, coming up. In the final part, we see how the family spend Christmas Day together. I've got a mortuary slab. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually got a mortuary slab. And we follow Yvette at a most haunted live, plucking up courage to go on stage for the first time in months. I'm I shit myself. I always shit myself before I do this show. And there is a spectacular climax to an evening of ghost hunting on Merseyside. <laughs> Been following a bet and Carl as their holiday plans hit a snag. Oh, well, Christmas is now ruined because of, of malfunction on your helicopter. No helicopters. Um, what a shame. And we watched them as they called out for the spirit of Christmas in their haunted hotel room. Well, if you are here, show yourself to us tonight. No, 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 no! It's Christmas Eve! It is a very special day for the BT clan, gathered together in Scotland. Happy Christmas, everyone! I love Christmas, I loved it. I actually convinced myself, I, I could have sworn that I heard the jingle of, of bells on the roof when I was a kid, and sworn that I heard Father Christmas as reindeer. Uh, I love Christmas. I've got a mortuary slab. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually got a mortuary slab. I've got a mortuary slab. <laughs> you bought me a mortuary it's slab. It's a desk, it's a desk. We have it too late today. Well, I'm really Are you sure you really like it? That's superb. I've got a mortuary slab. <laughs> <laughs> Who wouldn't want a mortuary slab? Oh, yeah. <gasps> Look at that. Oh, it's lovely. Oh, That's so gorgeous. Oh, what a lovely purse! Oh, I love it! Come here! Isn't that gorgeous? That's oh, what a lovely purse! <laughs> As the family sit together to open presents, thoughts of recent anxieties mingle with the Christmas cheer. Today is the last day that Liverpool is the current city of culture and the grandeur of its St George's Hall is the ideal venue for another ambitious seven nights of Most Haunted Live.
Fans have travelled from all over the UK to attend, and there is a palpable sense of excitement in the air. Although she's, she's, she's healing and she's getting better, she's still not healed. And as the doctor said, it will take up to six months before she is completely healed. And we're still only talking a couple of months since the operation, so she's really only a third into that sort of healing, full healing process. I always get nervous before a most haunted live. Um, and I think I'll be a little bit more nervous on this one because I'm hoping that I'll be able to do it physically. Um, I know I will, but it's the after effects. I'm thinking, oh gosh, you know, it's exhausting as it is. I'm shitting myself. I always shit myself before I do this show. This, this makeup for me won't take, won't take very long because I, I told, most people just don't like to mess with perfection. So I think having that time away, having my operation, um, yeah, it is a bit kind of nerve wracking because you're thinking, God, you know, you've got to get back in the driving seat and hopefully I'll be a good driver. Yvette has a rare moment of privacy before being the focus of four hours of live TV. I look huge. I look huge. I look fat. I look huge. What if I have it open? No, then I look like somebody's mother. Then I look even bigger. I am somebody's mother. <sighs> Sorry, I'm just having a bit of a moment here. Um, I had a bit of a panic attack, <laughs> and I don't know. For the first time ever, I've actually, I actually panicked and thought, I don't know, if, I don't know, if, I don't know if I can do it. <laughs> Not in a bad way. Just, I'm so frightened that nothing's going to happen. But I think it's because I'm too tired and I, I, I shouldn't have, we shouldn't have, I think it's too soon after the operation to, I'm just so tired and I think that's why I'm emotional and I'm so frightened and I, I'm so frightened about letting everybody down. I learned something new about Yvette on this, that she's one, she, she's one very, very brave girl. Inside the hall, Liverpool celebrates the end of its time as city of culture, while inside, Yvette and her fans celebrate her returning to what she does best. I mean, the one thing we are going to do on, um, I think it's night three, we are going to uh, see if we can contact Yvette's womb. Stay right where you are because Yvette and Carl are back after the break doing what they do best, plunging into darkness and dabbling with the occult. It's a two-hour special of their greatest hits as voted by you and featuring celebrity guests. The top 25 most haunted moments ever are next.